Hello, this is Esther here from Balance and Breathe. And I'm here tonight to talk to you about cravings and how you can beat cravings when they arise in your day. So my name is Esther, as I've already said, and I help people who are dealing with the stress of recovery to manage stress better and to develop new coping strategies to help you manage stress and to get through life without needing to numb or alter your emotions in any way. And I decided I was going to do this live stream tonight because I've been seeing lots of conversations recently and thinking about cravings and the nature of cravings. Marcus, don't put your time in the live stream. <sighs> The joys of parenthood. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've been thinking about cravings. I've been seeing um, lots of things about cravings online and just thinking about how cravings affect us. They affect us all. Um, you know, you don't have to be battling with addiction to know the the the, the fierceness of a craving that can strike you when you must have something. So I thought that I would just spend a little bit of time this evening going through a few strategies that you can use when you get a craving that you don't want to indulge. You know, if you are on a diet, if you're trying to give up sugar, if you're trying to control your Facebook consumption, if you are trying to beat an addiction, um, you know, for whatever it is, if you're trying to stop biting your nails, it's all... Um, sabotaged by cravings or it can be sabotaged by cravings. So I thought we'd start by thinking about what is a craving. So the Merriam-Webster dictionary online describes a craving as an intense, urgent or abnormal desire or longing. So I think you'd all agree that this is a pretty good definition of a craving. You know when you must have that thing it, that is what it feels like it's an intense it's urgent you must have it now you must must have it and it feels like an all-consuming desire or need for something um and these cravings can be very powerful they can just consume your whole mind they can wipe out all other thoughts um they can lay your good intentions to waste and they can make you do things that you really don't want to do. Now, I've had plenty of experience of this myself in the past um, and, and, you know, not just when I was uh, drinking and smoking, but in more recent times. Um, I've just recently given up coffee again <laughs> because i know that coffee doesn't really do me any favors and i'm better without it and i noticed that i was developing some addictive tendencies where coffee was concerned so i i became aware of that and i had to stop it but while i was going through that cold turkey time which if you've ever done it with coffee it's horrible um the 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 voice in my head was screaming through the um blinding headache that i had just have a cup of coffee. That'll make the headache go away. It was very believable because I knew it was true. If I had had a cup of coffee, the headache I was feeling would have gone. So that thought was very powerful. But I also knew that if I'd had that cup of coffee, I would have to go through the withdrawal again. So I was able to resist that. Um, oh, hello. I can see that I'm not talking to myself anymore. So hi, hi. If you could let me know who you are so I know who I'm talking to, that'd be lovely. So I was just talking about cravings and how powerful cravings are and how they can be all consuming um, and, and they can lead us to do things that we don't want to do. Now I've got um, one of the, my favorite stories that I like to tell. Hi Linda, lovely to see you. Is of when I, um, before I, before I gave up my job in 2013, I was driving home from work one day and I'd given up smoking for about six months at this point. I'd been, I'd had some pills from the doctor. I called them magic giving up smoking pills because they make giving up smoking so easy. And 
I'd given up smoking effortlessly. I was quite, I, I had been quite calm, but things had started to take a downward spiral in my life. And I was the exact opposite of calm at this point. And I was sitting in this traffic jam. I'd had a really bad day. My manager had just told us that she was resigning. And I was going to a course in the evening that I didn't want to go to. And everything was going wrong. It was a horrible, horrible environment in work. There was all sorts of other stuff going on. I was, I was clinging on to, you know, clinging on by my fingertips mentally in general anyway. And I was driving to this course and I was stuck in lots and lots of traffic. I, I, at the time I was driving to work most of the time, I was catching the train to work, so I didn't experience the traffic. And I was sitting in all this traffic and I was really on edge. And I had this thought in my head, if I was smoking now, I would have probably had at least two cigarettes by this point. And it was, the thought was, I'm almost like, I'm glad I'm not smoking now. But it actually went into my head. It painted this picture of me sitting in my car with a cigarette in my hand, calm, with a cigarette in my hand. And this picture suddenly became what I wanted. And out of nowhere, I had the most amazingly strong need for a cigarette. It was just astonishing. And within... I'd gone from that thought to, I'm quite, you know, it was almost like, I'm glad I'm not smoking now, to, if I don't have a cigarette soon, I'm going to drive into the car in front of me. And I remember having that thought that I got myself into such a state that if I didn't decide I was going to buy cigarettes, I would have lost the plot completely in that car. So I realized that I would rather buy a packet of cigarettes than actually drive into the car in front of me. So I allowed myself to do that. And when I bought the cigarettes, I stopped and I lit one up and I smoked it. And I was in tears at the time because I really didn't want to do it. My brain, well, there were two things going on in my brain. There was the, I don't want to smoke because I've done really well and I've been enjoying not smoking. And then there was this other side of me that just could do nothing else but smoke. And I was crying while I was smoking this cigarette. And it took me another year and a half after that to be able to give up smoking because I gave up at that point. I just thought, well, there you are. I'm a smoker and I'm just going to have to stay a smoker. And that really highlights to me the power of cravings. But it also demonstrates what... A craving is a cognitive dissonance it that it really is it really is we the craving is generally something we don't want you know it's it, it arrives out it rises out of something we don't want as a general rule you I sometimes get cravings for big plates of raw vegetables but that tends to come after I've had a bit of a chocolate feast um cravings tend to be things that we don't want the things that aren't so good for us that we aren't going to get so much benefit from and there is a massive cognitive dissonance that goes on you're absolutely right there linda um so that story that really highlights what goes on in our brain when we have a craving it's a thought it is nothing more than a thought it is created in our minds it is not a physical thing. It's not a tangible thing. It's just a thought. Just as much as you could picture a pink elephant with green spots right now, and that would actually be as real as a craving, except we don't hang on to the picture of the pink elephant with green spots. We let that one go because that's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> um, but when we get a craving, we latch on to that thought. We latch on to that craving until it becomes this huge thing that we can't ignore anymore and excuse me i'm just going to take my jumper off uh, so cravings are just thoughts they are as a, generally they are um connections that we've made in our mind with a certain situation and a particular action um or an emotional state. So if you're stressed, you might think that the answer to stress is a cigarette or a glass of wine or a bar of chocolate or a half hour mindless scrolling on Facebook. 
You might be um, somebody that has a cigarette with a morning cup of coffee and you cannot disconnect those two things. So that morning cup of coffee, if you don't have a cigarette, you, you can't enjoy your morning cup of coffee because all you're thinking about is the cigarette that's missing from it. Or I used to like, um, as soon as I had a glass of wine, I would have to have a cigarette. And the two things went hand in hand to such an extent that I was actually able to give both of them up on the same day because without one, I didn't need the other. The cravings are just thoughts and they are connected to our emotions and they are um, generally a way we want to find a way to balance our emotions somehow. So if you're stressed, you're going to have a cigarette and that's going to calm you down or have a glass of wine and think that's going to calm you down. So they're connected with the thoughts and emotions and that is, that's good and bad. Um, because because their thoughts they can be controlled they can be let go of they are in in, in what's the word I'm looking for in substantial things they're not you know it's not a physical thing that is going to actually physically restrain you in some way but it's a, a thought and thoughts we are basically the product of our thoughts so you can control it, but it takes work and it takes effort and it takes awareness to be able to control those thoughts and those cravings. So how can we learn to control the mind and to control the cravings? So I'm sure if you're if you're here watching this, then you probably know that there's a little bit of yoga lately to come into this. Um, yoga is a really powerful system to help us learn to balance out and control and harmonize the mind, the body and the emotions. So there's the perfect, perfect toolbox to look to, to help with cravings. And I know from my own experience that it's a very powerful toolbox to have at your disposal. And um, as you, you may know that yoga is the only thing that I've used to ha help me get sober after 20 years of addiction um, and it is through yoga that I actually don't really have much trouble with cravings I not with alcohol and um, cigarettes I've been able to give those up relatively effortlessly in the last three years so the tools that have been most helpful to me are largely connected with my breathing and also what I'm thinking in my head and how I used to change my views of the world. So I'd like to share some of those with you. So the first thing that I'm going to talk to you about, and um, if you've listened to me or read any of my writing in the past, you'll probably not be surprised that I'm going to talk about breathing. When we take deep breaths, when we really focus the awareness on the breath, it can it balances out the nervous system. And that is really important in the case of cravings, because a craving is a response to stress as a general rule. It's it's a, a, a you know, it, it, you're in a stressful situation and you want the thing that you were patterning has tells you is going to help you deal with the stress. So when you take a deep breath, a, a, a really slow, deep breath, that helps to calm the nervous system down. So it helps you to relax and to, to release some of that stress. So just doing that in itself could help to reduce the need for the, um, can reduce the craving. When you take that deep breath, it also gives you a few moments of pause, of reflection, time to make a different choice. So when you take that deep breath, you're not immediately reaching for the thing. I mean, I've got, I've got a chocolate wrapper here, so if I'm, if I'm not thinking about it, if I'm just reacting and not thinking, I might be halfway through this, this is an empty chocolate wrapper, but I might be halfway through that bar of chocolate before I've even noticed I'm doing it. That has happened in the past with me, and I'm sure that it, it, it will have happened to you with something where you're just absentmindedly eating things or smoking or you're just drinking. It, it happens without that awareness. But when you take that deep breath or those few deep breaths, it gives you that moment to just notice what's going on and how you're feeling. You can notice how you're feeling. You can notice what you're doing and notice what's going on in your head. And you can change your response. You can choose a different 
have to take. So at that point, you can think, am I going to light the cigarette or shall I go and do something else? Shall I, I don't know, go for a walk or go and run a bath or go and write down how I'm feeling or something? You can choose a different response. So I would like to, if I mean, if you, you can join in if you like, but I'm just going to count you through a few breaths just so that you get a feel for what that deep breathing feels like. And Lisa, if you're here, I know that you've done this with me in yoga classes in the past. Um, so we'll just take a couple of deep breaths. So if you just sit up nice and straight in your chair, you can clasp your hands together. I've got my right finger on top of my left here and just drop those into your lap. And you can close your eyes if you wish, or you can just drop your eyes so you're looking, not, not looking straight at me, so you're just not really looking at anything very much. You're not getting distracted by what you can see. And we're just going to slow the breath down. So taking a nice deep breath. And then breathing out. Then and out. And then and out. One more in. And out. So we'll just leave it at those few for now, but that should be enough just to give you a feel of that calming effect that taking those few breaths can have on you. So if you're if you're feeling that craving rising, if you're feeling the stress rising, if you can notice what you're feeling and just take those few deep breaths you'll find that you will calm down and that you can just think, okay, what do I want to do with this feeling now? What do I want to do in this moment? And you can just make a different decision. You might decide to go ahead and eat the biscuit or smoke the cigarette or pour the glass of wine, but at least you're doing so with consciousness then. Con yeah, consciousness. You, you're, you're aware of what you're doing rather than it just being an absent-minded satisfying of the craving. When we bring awareness to things, it changes the relationship that we have with them. So you'll find that you'll experience the um, consumption of whatever it is that you go for. You, you'll find that you experience that differently if you've just had that moment and you've got that awareness with it. So another way, they're connected with the breathing. One of the most powerful ways of learning how to let go of thoughts and... Um, just a second, I just need to ask Marcus to do something. Marcus, can you give a moment down? He's playing some awful game next door and the music is hideous. Um, so a way that we can learn to let go of thoughts and just to allow them to just be thought rather than things that have to control us is through meditative practices. So through sitting quietly, through observing the breath, through just being in the moment and being aware of what we are doing in the moment. And I'm, you may or may not have a meditation practice. If you don't, I really recommend it. Even if all you do is five minutes every day, or five minutes at the, you know, whatever time you like, five minutes in the morning, five minutes just before bed is an amazing way to start and end your day. Just five minutes of sitting and being with the breath. It can transform how you view the world in lots of ways. And it can transform how you deal with your thoughts. Because in, in meditation, the goal of it isn't about having like a blank white canvas in your head the point of it is about learning to let go of the thoughts that come in and want to or they're dancing around in front of you for your attention it's about letting go of those thoughts and if you could do that with 
the mental shopping list that turns up when you're in a meditation. You can learn to do that when you're having a craving episode as well. So we'll um, we'll sit and do a couple of minutes of a meditation, just so I can give you a, a brief insight into how it is. So again, we're gonna clasp the hands together and drop them into the lap. And then again, if you can close your eyes for this, then this will be better. The less sensory information you have going on, the better. So just close your eyes. Or again, if you're not comfortable to do that, just drop your eyes down so you're looking at nothing. And just relax your gaze. And we're just going to bring the awareness to the breath. So you're really focusing your attention here on the breath. You don't have to try and slow the breath down. Just notice what your breath is doing. Notice where you're breathing in. Are you breathing in through your nose or your mouth? Well, how is the breath? Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it shallow? Is it deep? Where in your lungs is the breath going? Is it going to the top? Is it going down to the bottom of the lungs? Your shoulders rising, is your chest puffing out, is your abdomen sticking out? What's happening in your body as you take these breaths? Try and be really, really focused on the breath. Being really aware of what is happening in your body. Noticing any smells that come in on the breath. Keeping your mind focused on the breath. When your mind wanders, you notice it. Just gently come back to the breath. Your mind will wander, and that's okay. But as soon as you notice, just let go of whatever it is that you're thinking of. And come back to focusing on the breath. You'd be amazed at the mundane nonsense that comes running through your head when you try and focus on your breath. Let it all go. Stay focused on your breath. We'll just have a minute or so, just sitting quietly, remembering to stay focused on the breath. Come back gently to the breath whenever you are in the And just give your hands a little wriggle and open your eyes. We'll come back into the moment. And I hope that you enjoyed that and that you can see that there's a real power in that. You might have really struggled to keep your mind focused on the breath. That's okay. Um, it's, you know, it, the mind doesn't want to stay focused on the breath. The mind wants to keep wandering off and thinking about anything but focusing on the breath. And that's okay. The more you practice it, the more you'll find you notice your mind wandering and that you can bring it back. And even if you can only bring it back for half an inhalation, then that's going, that's better than not noticing that inhalation at all. And as you practice more, you get better at it. And the more you can practice that, the more you'll find that you're able to let go of other thoughts. And that is what we're aiming for here. That's, that's you know, when you're having a craving episode, if you can just think, okay, I don't want that thought anymore, I've just let go of it. There's power in that. 
And again, you, you won't get that straight away, but the more you practice this meditation, this quietness, this stillness in your mind, the more you're going to be able to do that. And so there is real power. There are a whole host of other benefits to developing a meditation practice in your day as well. Um, but that's a whole other live stream. There's there's so many reasons why why this is really worth doing. If you don't already do it, then I really, really, really recommend it. All you need is five minutes and it will just do so much good for you um, in your day. So connected with the idea of letting go of the thoughts, another thing that's really helpful in, in being able to learn to deal with cravings is the famous phrase, this too shall pass, or to quote my favorite, very, very favorite Beatle, all things must pass, which I, I like that one. <laughs> um, so just knowing that, that it'll pass, that this craving, this thing that you're really thinking about right now will pass if you choose to allow it to pass. You can, we can hang on to things and really focus on them or we can let it pass and let it go. And I oh, there's a whole host of reactions going on here. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I was listening to a, Buddha, a secular Buddhism podcast today, and he was talking about how we, when we experience moments of suffering, we suffer because of the thing. And then we suffer because we keep thinking about the thing. We keep thinking about our emotional reaction to the thing. And we we pile suffering on top of suffering by thinking about it all the time, by hanging on to it all the time. Um, and that's what that's what we do with a craving. We'll have the craving. And because we can't let go of it, we make it worse. We turn it into this big, all-consuming thing. And it is possible to just think, okay, it's here, okay, and let it go and know that it will pass. Cravings, they only actually really um, have an impact physiologically for a very short space of time. It's the thought that actually keeps it going. So you might have that physical um need for something you know i mean i when i i remember when i first gave up smoking there was this there's nothing in my hands there should be something in my hands kind of feeling so every now and then my hands would feel empty because i didn't have a cigarette in between my fingers that passes really quickly but we keep that we keep focusing on them so we keep it going in our head so if we can just let it pass and know that that feeling will pass then then that is another way we can get through the moment of craving. One and another way that you can deal with a craving, which is very well known in the 12 steps um, in the fellowship movement, is talking about it. You know, if, in, if you're a member of, of a 12 step program, you will have a sponsor, you'll have somebody that you can ring in a moment of craving and they can kind of talk you in from the ledge of that craving so having someone to talk to having someone to share it with is really helpful phone up your best friend phone up your mom phone up anybody that you can talk to about it and if there isn't anyone around at the time that you can talk to grab a notebook and grab a pen and write it all down just sit and write and write and write and write and get it out of your system that way it can really, really help. And actually, if you take the writing um, path, if you, if you grab a notebook and pen and write it all down, you might find that you can help to process some of the emotions that are behind the craving as well. And you can get that from talking to somebody as well, obviously, that you, you can see what is actually going on. Because generally, when we have a craving, there's something else, there's something that we're missing, there's something that we need. So it could be that you're you're feeling a craving because you're feeling lonely. You might be craving sugar because you're hungry. You might be craving 
a cup of coffee because you're really tired and actually what you need is is to go to bed or to have a have a nap at least if it's you know if it's not bedtime have a nap it might be that you're very tired it might be that you're feeling very anxious about something and you need to just process that emotion rather than masking it with wine or food or cigarettes or something it might try and uncover the emotion that is going on behind it and that's why talking to somebody or journaling about your craving can really help because you can see what's going on behind it there's um something that i've seen which i think comes out of the 12 step movement I, i'm not hugely familiar with the 12 step movement so i'm not 100 percent sure if it is i think it is which is the halt method the halt um idea so if you're experiencing a craving you halt and you ask yourself are you hungry and i think it's are you angry are you lonely or are you tired and those are the four main triggers that will um be behind a craving hungry angry lonely or tired and i think that that would certainly sum up most of my um most of my consumption often all at the same time <laughs> so those are really you know, if you if you feel that craving halt and think about what's behind it talk to somebody to help you to help figure it out or maybe write it down get your notebook get your journal and just write down see what comes out one thing that i like to do i mean I, it doesn't happen very often i don't often get the cravings anymore but in those moments when I have thought about drinking, I've generally projected past the moment when I'd enjoy the drink. So there might be that moment where I would have a drink and a little bit of time I might enjoy it. But then I tend to think about what's going to happen afterwards. So if you can take a step back from the immediate gratification and of the satisfaction of the um, craving, if you can st sort of see beyond that satisfaction that immediate gratification and forward project to what will happen afterwards um i always think about i always imagine waking up and for the first time in over three years not remembering going to bed so in those moments when i've thought about drinking i imagine waking up in the morning and not being able to remember how i get to bed how i got to bed and that normally puts me off because I've enjoyed being able to remember to re being able to remember going to bed every night. So if you can forward project and think about the consequences that you like the least about indulging that craving. Um, that a few last week, the week before, I I I was premenstrual and I ate a little bit too much chocolate and I felt really really sick after that. I really didn't feel good. So then the next time I had a bit of a craving for chocolate, I thought about how I felt after that last chocolate and I thought, do I want to experience that again? I haven't bought any chocolate since and I actually fancied some peppermint cream tonight but I didn't because I just thought I don't want to feel like that again so it's a, it, that can really help if you can just step back from that craving for just a moment and think about what you're going to feel like afterwards after that moment of pleasure has passed because we have the pleasure you might have that pleasurable moment but then there's going to be a consequence at the end of it and it's normally the consequences the other reasons that you're trying to even battle with this craving in the first place because you actually don't want those consequences so try and you know remind yourself why you don't want those consequences um the last thing i wanted to share with you tonight um because i need to go and put the child to bed is a practice which you may have seen me doing before it's called throwing out and it's a really physical practice which really helps to release any feeling of tension any negativity and it's a great way to think about actually just letting go of anything that you don't want to have to experience um so it's a it's a standing up exercise it's one that you can do you, it's, it's a private exercise it's not one to do on the bus stop or in the middle of the office but it's one that you can do in the in the toilets at work in your bedroom in the bathroom i'm 
I, I live with a seven year old, I can do it anywhere I like. But you want to go somewhere where maybe there's not anybody else around, you can do it with the kids, they tend to like it. Um, but it's a really powerful practice for just releasing that tension and just letting go of that rage or whatever you're feeling. So I'm going to stand up, move my chair out of the way. And I'm going to tie my hair back because it's going to annoy me otherwise. So to do the throwing out, you start with your right arm and you're just going to give it a shake. And the more you can shake your arm, the more you can put into this, the more you're going to get out of it. So really go for this. Give it a really good shake. And then we go on to the left arm. And then the right again. And the left. And then over to the right with both arms. Shake up high. And then moving down. And shaking all around the side of your body, right the way down to the floor, and then back over to the left, and down. And shaking all around. And I'm just going to take my top off. Oh. So really shaking. And then you're going to catch up all that negativity in your hands, breathe in, and release. And think about throwing it up and throw it away. And then we're going to shake again. And catching it all up, all that negativity and stress, breathe in and release. Now one more time. Catch up that stress and hold and breathe in and release. And then with your eyes closed, let your arms swing at the side of your body. And then hold the arms still. Breathing slowly, let your body rest. Feeling all that tension just melting away. Focus on your breath. Feel your heart rate slowing down. And then open the eyes. And so. That's basically all I wanted to share with you, Pat. I've got a lot more that I can share with you. Um, there is a blog post, uh, which I have, I'm going to, um, which I will put in, I'll put the link to this blog post in the comments because there are some more practices in here that you can use. Um, so there's a blog post there, I'll just share that in the comments. If you wanted to explore this in any more detail, I offer our sessions where you can work with me online for one hour. and We can go through some of these practices. We can talk about your cravings. We can talk about how you manage stress in your life. And we can devise a little bit of a, a, a toolbox for you that you can take away into your life and practice and work on. And that is available for just £99 for one hour you'll get a recording of the session as well and we can tailor it will be tailored for you so there's not you know that we cover certain exercises but I will tailor it for you so I'll be providing the right practices and the right advice for your specific situation so if you'd like to talk more about that we can have a chat about it just drop me a message and let me know and we can fix up a time so just have a quick chat see what you want see if i can help you and um if there's any questions if anybody that's on now would like to ask me any questions thank you linda as well lovely to see you on here um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll just wait for one minute to see if any questions come in. And then if not, I'm going to go and put 
Marcus to bed. I'm sure he won't be very happy about that because he's currently playing Roblox. But um, it's 10 past day and he's got a swimming lesson in the morning. So he needs to go. And also, I need to go to bed. It's nearly my bedtime as well. So um, I'm not seeing any questions. So I'm going to say goodnight now. If you do have any questions, do feel free to message me. I'll be off Facebook for the rest of the night now, but I'll see them in the morning. So have a lovely evening, um, certain evening where I am, and um, speak to you soon. Bye.